Hello there, this is Vic Benedict. We're playing Resident Evil 5 on professional difficulty. This is chapter 3-3. It's entitled Oil Field. And we are playing on professional difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty available for play. And it's available for play after you clear veteran difficulty. And I think only after you defeat veteran difficulty. I love that in games. Because it, it weeds out the people who try to play on hardest difficulties by playing on easy, but that kind of doesn't make too much sense though, because if you're playing on easy, you, it's not like you're going to be, I mean, play, play, people that play on easy, you know, they're not going to play on hard, or very hard, and that's fine, you're not uh, less, less of a person for not doing it, but you're kind of doing the game a disservice in my opinion. So this is one of my favorite areas in the game, and one of my most hated bosses and the reason for it is the, the arbitrary and far too sporadic quick time events that punctuate this boss fight which is pretty much a bastardized shit fest in my opinion so this checkpoint is pretty long here so watch out for the the flyers and don't perish don't get caught in a reload because they will most definitely grab you and just down them. Uh, there is a critical update, critical upgrade, excuse me, for the shotgun too, if you want to go with, with that particular gun. It's not available for the gun that I have, for the shotgun that I have. I think that's one of the the, um, the prices you pay for, for more damage output. So you can either save these barrels now or use them here. It doesn't real much matter in my opinion. It would matter if there were a dense, uh, more dense throb of enemy uh, mob of enemies, but I I don't believe believe there are. However, there is another spawn once you pull the lever. So let's see. Yeah, they, they really should have put the checkpoint over here, like, uh, as soon as you touch down, because when you die, you have to do that boring first part, which is simple and boring. So there's the dynamite chucker. We're going to take him down, because he needs to be taken down. But yeah, the boss fight, it it's just an abomination. And one of the problems is... They're having you do left trigger plus right trigger quick time events. Um, that's one of the the two that you can get. I've discussed the the evade tech, the, the evade QTEs in this game. They're left trigger and right trigger, or X plus A. And the problem with the former is that well, I got grabbed a lot over here. Fortunately, it didn't take too much off. The problem with the former. That is to say, what, what was the former and latter that I was talking about? Oh, the, the, the triggers, the trigger QT, QTE. The problem with that is you're holding the right trigger. Um, most, of the, most of the time you're going to be on the turrets, and to, to, to shoot with a turret, you have to hold the right trigger. If you release the right trigger, he stops firing and you kind of step away from the turret, but... Uh, this is where the checkpoint is, by the way. So it's it's pretty fair after after that little sequence there. But you get a sporadic ch um, sp a sporadic QTE, which is left trigger and right trigger, or the X plus A button. But if it's the former, what happens is I think I think it the the success of the QTE is is compromised because you're already holding the right trigger and sometimes like you're holding the right trigger and then you get that QTE on screen and I think that it somehow negatively affects the outcome of it because as you're holding R RT you're, you're then required to what do you do like do you release the right trigger and then, and then press both of the triggers or do you just keep holding the right trigger and then press the left trigger I've never been able to find a, a compromise or, or a way to do it so all I do is I keep pausing the screen after releasing the trigger because 
it counts as releasing it if you press start. I I, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, it counts. As, for me, it counts because I just press start and then I let just let go of the trigger, and it's just it's badly made. Also, because um, to ready your gun and and on this control scheme, it's it's right trigger, but when you press right trigger, sometimes you'll see like when I try to use the rocket launcher at the end of the Irving fight. I get uh, screwed up because instead of trying to, to aim my rocket and fire at him, I grab the turret because it's right trigger. And right trigger is to grab the turret. But since I was near near to the turret, I grabbed... You'll, you'll see what it is. It's just... It's so fucking shitty. I, Are you okay? it, it's pretty much the, ascent, the, the epitome of why I hate boss fights. I hate boss fights. I mean... Somebody, somebody left a comment saying that you know, try to try to enjoy this game because we know you hate QTEs. The guy was pretty funny, he made me laugh. Or the guy, I'm screwing up my commentary so bad these days, so bad. And people have been saying like this is the best RE5 guide on the internet. And the only thing I'll say to that is, there are many, like there are tons of people better than I am. But maybe the guy was just paying me a compliment. As far as RE5 guides on YouTube with commentary I might be the best because there are so few guides with commentary but I, I do need to improve my elocution and my I, I just get nervous on these of late I'm not sure why I'm getting nervous so anyway the goal over here is just to kill everybody and then pull the levers very simple goal But um, the guy was the guy. The guy mentioned something about, you know, he he remembered that I hated boss fights, and there's a a surfeit of boss fights in this game. So he, he was just telling me, you know, I hope you can still enjoy the game considering all the boss fights, since you hate boss fights. And I do. I really hate boss fights. So we're almost we're almost ready to clear on out of here, you guys. And uh, let's see, more enemies spawn here, unfortunately, and there's no checkpoint. And look at all these flyers up there. Four flyers. Uh, also, in one of the earlier videos, I'm not sure which one it was. I was I was I was really lamb blasting the consoles and calling them pieces of shit and uh, one of my subscribers I don't know the the full username but it's daily stealth something with the number on it he was telling me you know you you can't reasonably expect these consoles to be as powerful as you know a thousand dollar rigs which my con my my rig was twelve hundred dollars back in it was I think I think I got it in 2012 but you have to remember, I'm I'm very um, I'm a very f a fastidious person about maintaining my rig, um, always cleaning it. Uh, most importantly, cleaning the out the inside of it as well as the outside. The outside is not important as much. Uh, you know, cleaning the fans off, the video card, cleaning all the ports all the time. Uh, just getting the dust out of the rig. Um, and I've. I've upgraded it over the years. I, I, I re I, I put a new power supply in. If you want to know my PC specifications, I've put them in my channel about page if you want to look at it. And it, it's kind of become a trend to do that I, I, I think and I've rewritten my about page a little bit too to be more concise but the limitation of characters that you can write on there is it makes it a challenge to, to write everything you want to. So I'm just oh about the about my rig. Um, yeah, I, I do realize that it's it's not overpowered or anything. It's just uh, it's a very nice machine, and 
You know, if, if you maintain your machine, it'll last about seven to eight years. There's no reason to have to buy a PC every four years or th every three years. It's, uh, you know, if you, if you take care of it, it'll last about eight years. I mean, no one expects you to buy a PC every three years, but yeah, the consoles, I, I do unreasonably... Um, I've just become a PC snob, unfortunately, and I'm gonna try to refrain, refrain from being like that, but... Like, all I want is the best experience with the game, and I still like consoles, it's just that I'm, I'm, I'm just not very impressed with the PS4, and I don't, I don't like the controller. So that kind of skews my opinion about it. So, what's going to happen here is that the turret that I'm on now fires machine gun uh, rounds. And then the turret, I'll show you. The one I put, I always put Sheva on the, uh, it's like a um, some kind of a rocket launcher, which overheats on the first use, but she's pretty accurate. And the problem here is that if she's on the turret, or even if she isn't on the turret, I've only rarely had her recover me. So it, it's like you have to do this no damage. Because if she's on the turret, just forget about her healing you. There's just... She won't come and get you. Um, right there, that doesn't take any damage off you. I also equip the Magnum over here to deal some damage to, to this guy. And I also have the machine gun, or the, the rocket launcher to take care of this fucker. So, uh, the next place he comes is right up here, and you want to be firing at the bulb on his uh, on his snout. And this is a QTE, I believe. It's see, I just keep pressing pause, rapidly pressing pause, because it's not enough that you just press the buttons correctly. You have to do it like at the right time. So, at this point, take her off that turret and put her on this turret to fire the, the, the rocket rounds or whatever they are um, and then go over here onto this turret and you'll have the, the flailing tentacles and these do grab you with a QTE they also uh, do a, a slack like a, like a pound at you with a QTE so just constantly like if you don't struggle with the QTEs here, you're you're like a god in my opinion because the the reflexes re required to react to it, I I just it's just unreasonable. It's unreasonable. So, see he's gonna do it again here. So just keep pressing pause. Hit him with the magnum or the shotgun. And now he's gonna go over to this location, so put Sheva on a turret and just you know back off if you have to. When the tentacles come up here you can just shoot them with a shotgun but just bear in mind that they grab you, they grab Sheva and they more than like, like you pretty much have to do this no damage, it's, it's really ridiculous like, if you get grabbed, it's not a death sentence. If Sheva gets grabbed, it's not a death sentence. It's just the QTEs if you, if you fail those. Because it puts you in a red, and nobody can revive you. Because Sheva is either indisposed on a turret, or she just, she's, she just doesn't respond the way she usually does. So, you know, just take care of these as quickly as possible. Mind that you don't overheat the machine, because you'll be penalized pretty heavily by not being able to use it and just shoot the tentacles that are nearest to you because those are the ones that grab you and afterwards just keep firing it's important to have Sheva on to deal damage she's very accurate quite helpful too do the QTEs and the bulb is on his other on the other side so it's kind of it's it's too um, he's too far for us to hit him right there and I've left the cutscene in over here just for some reference for you, reference points. And if I were you, I would just have the, the rocket launcher on to take him down. There he is. Dealt some pretty good damage to him. If you don't use the rocket launcher, I have 
I've watched a couple of videos of, to see how long it takes to take him down, and it isn't that much with the turrets, but I just, I just, um, this took about, it was two sessions of a half an hour, so it took me an hour, maybe a little bit longer, maybe an hour and ten minutes, and it's just fucking shit, it's just a shit fest, man. A bad shit fest. So, so what's going to happen in a moment is Irving is going to uh, reveal himself, and you can start hitting him. And I think this is where it is. So, equip your rocket launcher. And here's the trouble. See, I, I equipped my rocket launcher. I pressed our, our right trigger, and it locked, locked onto the to that. Take care. 